Good morning, it's Miss Yanaki again. Um, today I thought we would do um, a canvas painting um, using canvases that you can find in the dollar store and paint that you can find in the dollar store of something cheerful like a colorful tropical fish. Um, so the supplies that you'll need are whatever dollar store acrylic paints you can find. Um, a canvas. I have, I was excited to finally find canvases. Um, this one was two dollars. I like the square shape of it. Um, you'll need some brushes that have good spring. These ones were three three dollars white um, brushes from the do dollar store. Um, you could also get a large. You can also find larger canvases if you want to do a larger format, that's, that's fine. So you're going to need canvases, paint, paint brushes. You're going to need some uh, something from your recycling to mix your paint on and a jar from your recycling for some water. Um, the other thing uh, that you're going to have to find is some images that you're going to copy of your tropical fish. So you can do that by typing in tropical fish on the uh, internet. This one, um, I actually typed in trigger fish um, because my daughter painted a trigger fish that I thought was really cute. And uh, she used an image that she found on the internet. This may not be the exact same one, but it's very similar. Um, you can, I also like to use children's books um, and calendars are a great source of uh, images as well. So you could try printing some, if you have a printer, you can print some of the images from your, from the internet that you could have right beside you when you're dry, drawing. I also happen to have some tropical fish books because I like to snorkel too. Um, they're a nice reference as well. Okay, so first step is what you do is, after you unwrap your canvas, is to paint the whole canvas a solid bright color. Um, and I like to use um, red or yellow or orange. And I kind of like what my daughter did here using a mixture of red and yellow. So that is what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna squirt some red with a bit of yellow. And if you can find bright red, that would be great. I see this one's called Christmas red. Um, and the reason why I like to paint the canvas with a a solid color first is that you're not you won't have any little white bits of canvas showing through your painting when you're when you're done which makes it look unfinished instead you can have little bits of red showing through which can act as a nice complementary color to what you're if you're using blues and make it look very vibrant now some people paint the edges uh, some people don't. I kind of like the edges painted because it looks finished from all sides, but that's a personal preference. Okay, so after your canvas um, base coat, undercoat, has been painted with um, a bright color, um, in this case it was red mixed with a little uh, yellow, the next thing you're going to do is practice sketching your tropical fish. And I googled trigger fish and I came up with this image and I decided to just try and practice um, sketching it on a square. I folded the piece of paper like a square shape just like the canvas is and practiced sketching it. Once you get a sketch that you're kind of happy with then you can um, look at that sketch and um, as well as your image and try and transfer it onto the canvas. Um, using a pencil. Now, sometimes you might find that the pencil is a little bit tricky to see. Um, and if you happen to have chalk at home, I, uh, I find that chalk um, is useful for um, transferring a drawing because you can see it better on a colored surface. So I'm just going to continue um, drawing some of the details. Um, it is, you can erase, but um, it does leave a bit of a mark. So it's good for sure to practice on paper first before you transfer your drawing over onto the canvas. So whichever fish you choose, uh, try to pick one that's got a lot of fun patterns and colors. 
um, because you can make it look any way you want. It doesn't have to look exactly like the picture and it'll be fun to color in with the different colors of paint. So I'm just going to finish drawing and then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so my next stage after I've sketched in my fish is to trace the um, lines with black. Now I just noticed that um, I prefer to move to a smaller brush. So if you could happen to get a small as brush as possible, I think it's maybe a zero or a number one, that might make it easier for tracing with skinny lines, otherwise your lines might end up being fat. So I'm just tracing over my, my pencil lines, pulling the brush um, with block paint. Um, that's another thing I'm always telling students, pull your brush. If you push a brush, you get a fat line. If you pull the brush, you can have control and can get a skinnier line. So if you find that um, you don't have a skinny brush and it's too hard to trace with uh, the brushes that you have, I was thinking you could probably try um, using a Sharpie marker. That may be easier than tracing with a paintbrush. So I'm going to do, I did part of this in paint, but I'm going to just see if this works. Yeah, it seems to be working. Tracing my pencil line with Sharpie. So whichever you find the easier, you could go over all of your lines with the paint, skinny paintbrush and black paint, acrylic paint, or try a Sharpie marker. Okay, I just wanted to show you what it looks like um, now that I've traced my pencil lines of the trigger fish. Um, and I do think I prefer the look of um, the painted lines as opposed to the, the Sharpie. I think that one was Sharpie there. It just looks like they vary a little bit more and look, look a little bit more interesting. So my next stage, I'm gonna take a look at the paints that I've got and start coloring in my trigger fish. I, I may try to make it look somewhat realistic, but you could color in your fish with any colors that you have any in any way you want, whatever you feel like. Okay, I just wanted to show you um, the first color that I decided to apply was the white, because there's a lot of white dots, and what it looks like um, at this stage. I think the next thing I may do will probably be maybe the yellow and the blue, and lastly I'm going to do um, a dark blue or black for the background back again. Just wanted to show you what stage I'm at before I put in the dark um, bluey black um, scales. Uh, and so I put in the white spots, the fins, and the yellow so far. And um, one pointer that I think is very important that I forgot to mention is when you're painting, um, when you have a colored um, base coat like this or undercoat, try to leave a little bit of it showing through. See, I'm not coloring it totally in when I color in a spot. See, I've left a red, orangey red crack around things, and that kind of adds interest and um, makes it more dynamic when, um, when you have that contrasting of color. So try, try your best to leave some of the crack, some cracks of your background color showing through, and it'll just make it look a lot more interesting when the painting is finished. All right, now I've finished uh, painting in the fish and I wanted to show you what the, the final product looked like. Um, just a couple of things that um, I want to point out. Um, the, the picture of, the actual picture of the fish, uh, it looked black. And when I started painting the fish black, I didn't like the way it looked against the yellow and the red background. So I ended up using a dark blue. Um, so I took black and I mixed a little a little bit of black, but mainly blue. And the other thing that, uh, and I, unfortunately I had to use a blue that wasn't from the dollar store, but I'm pretty sure you could get an ultramarine blue um, from the dollar store. I just didn't have a darker blue. Um, the other thing that I found made the fish look a little bit more interesting was if you take a look on the white, I added a little 
bits of blue highlight. Um, uh, just taking some blue and mixing it in with some white. And then um, adding some little spots of blue. See on top of the white, it just adds a little bit of different, a little bit of uh, interest. Makes it a little bit more interesting than just plain white. And uh, similarly with the with the dark blue background, I took um, I took a uh, a little bit lighter blue. Um, and added some blue stroke, some little bit lighter blue strokes here and there on top of the dark background. And it sort of, I think, gives it an effect of scales or shimmering in the water. So at this point, you could leave the painting as it is, or if you wanted to, um, you could paint the background with water and movement in different watercolors, but I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave it as is. If you do go to paint the background in, don't forget to leave the little red crack around your fish to make it pop out. So here's my trigger fish. And that was the original one that my daughter did that inspired me. And I hope you have fun looking up tropical fish and coming up with a dollar store tropical fish painting that, uh, that you're happy with. <laughs>